about that. Okay, um, this training is going to be uh, focused on what we do with all of our contacts. And I'm gonna tell you that this is just, it's not easy. This is one of the hardest things, OMs and agents, to try to get done. And it's hard because you're interfacing with a lot of different programs. And it's also hard because I still don't feel like the way that I framed it. And so Ashley and Elizabeth, if you have other um, ideas, I'm, I'm wide open. I don't feel like I've figured out exactly how to best tell someone to get their contacts in, into IQO so that it's a seamless um, thing when you want to do your newsletter or whatever. So I'm still struggling with that. And uh, I wish it was easier at any rate. We are going to start at Elizabeth's request because whatever Elizabeth requests I want to I want to fulfill. Um, we're going to start by ask, going over really quickly how to uh, send an MLS blast through IQO. And Elizabeth and Betsy, here's the caveat: is that Veil is weird, and um, I've heard <laughs> from different people that no, you're not allowed to do it this way. You have to do it through VRBO or whatever. Um, and that's a veiled MLS stipulation. Yeah. I don't know. I don't care. I'm going to show you how we've set it up so that everyone in the company can use the MLS distribution list through IQO. Okay. Now, if people jump your case about that in veil, at least you're uh, getting through to them. That's the way I feel. Right. And where they're coming from, just real quick, um, is that there are restrictions. I mean, if, you, if this listing's been sitting in the MLS for two weeks and I'm just now putting a new listing out, I will get my hand slapped because you only have two weeks that you can put it out there and then, I'll, then you cannot do it anymore because they don't want the congestion of the email blasts. That's why. Yeah, that's awesome. That sounds like it's really useful for real estate agents. <laughs> Hey, let's make policies that are going to hinder our ability to do our job. Okay. All in favor. All right. That's my go-to voice. And the reason I, it's my go-to voice is that's what my, how my son talks to me. So I apologize for the continued ridiculous sounding voice. All right. I'm going to share my screen, I think. Um, and we're going to look at IQO for a moment. Okay. So share screen. You should see, you should see. Nothing yet. Okay, here's IQO. All right, uh, I'm gonna go home. Um, so, OMs, you can do this. Hi, Margaret, is that you? Maybe, yes. Oh, and there's uh, there's Lauren, nice to have you back, Lauren. Okay, um, OMs, this is a great way to be like a superhero. Like, let me just help you with this, because it's really pretty easy. And uh, sometimes we want to make things seem harder so that agents come to us and then we can you know, get the pat on the back because we did the job for them. But this is a pretty, pretty simple thing to do. Um, I have a new listing and uh, I want to send it to the MLS. I'm sorry. Someone say something. Okay. So I come to the marketing tab, sorry, the marketing file cabinet, all the things I need to do to market, and to touch people, whether they're my contacts, my leads, or um, the MLS, are here in the marketing file cabinet, okay? And I'm gonna come to my campaigns. Wait, okay, are you, are you giving direction as if you're an office manager? Or an agent or whatever. I mean, this, this all functions pretty much the same way, unless I'm totally confused, but I think it functions the same way, okay? okay. All right, now, this is where maybe it's a little bit confusing because what you're doing is you're sending out a, an event from you, but we have set up the distribution list. So it's a company campaign. Okay. Even though it's something that the agent is doing for themselves, it's in there as a company campaign. That's where all of the MLS lists live. Okay. So Bozeman MLS campaign. See, it says contact right here. This is a contact. Sorry. I said, uh-huh. Okay, this is a contact campaign, which means there's no content in it. There's only contacts. So all the others pretty much are event campaigns. So these are things that already live in there. This is the type that it's only the recipients live in there and then you get to create the content. Now, Elizabeth and Ashley and Margaret and Daisha, if you're on this and Jennifer and Lisa, um, 
we're going to be updating these about on a monthly or every bi-monthly basis so that the lists are accurate and up to date. Um, we're probably about a month away from that. Um, but here is the simple way to do it. And I'm going to do Vail because Elizabeth asked. And so Vail, of course, starts with a V, so it's on the next page. And it starts with a V, so it's on the next page. Vail MLS campaign. The reason it says zero across the board is because this keeps track of of the individual agent's use of this thing. So if I was acting as Chris McDonald, for instance, it might be um, thousands of people in here if he's done it several times. But since I'm not an agent and I don't do business in Vail, and the only thing I do is I send Bozeman newsletters to Sun Valley agents, it says zero here, okay? I can hover over actions, um, or I can just click here. If I click on the thing itself, I get this funky screen, which always bugs me because it makes an agent go, what, there's nothing available? You come here to this gray bar, this drawer in your marketing file cabinet that says events. No events found. We're going to add an event. We're going to create the event right here. Back right. up, back up for me just a second because um, everybody's photos was blocking. So you hit uh, Vail MLS campaign, and then what'd you hit? So it, I hit Vail MLS campaign, and then you see this screen, and it looks freaky because there's no information in it, and you're like, "What? No, no data? Come okay. on!" So you go to events here. Okay, thank you. Second tab. This gray tab does not, this gray bar does not stand out. I totally get it. And it's hard to sometimes remember where to go, but this gray bar should be a very good friend of yours. Um, before I even go to events, we can go to recipients and we can see there are 700 people in the MLS, Vail MLS campaign. Okay. So this is going to go to 700 um, agents and ancillary MLS people in Vail. Okay, whatever we were able to pull from the Vail Board of Realtors. But we're going to go to events because we're going to create our event. Okay, and Elizabeth, I should have asked you this, but now I'll use Chris's uh, bellyache address. So there's nothing here, no events found because I have not sent out anything yet. So we're going to add event. Okay, an event is a little thing that happens. If a campaign is a series of uh, stops, think of a politician is on a campaign, that's like all the things they do, but each of the events makes up their campaign. So what we're doing right here is one little event because we're talking about the big overall campaign. All right, um, so what we can do is we can make a, we wanna do a flyer so we can go over here. We wanna do a property flyer. Um, I like the general one, honestly. I think it's got the best, no, not sorry, not the general one, the um, on the market one. Yeah, do that when you're not just listed if we're gonna use yeah. Because you have, you have more um, flexibility with the on the market one here, okay? okay? All right. If it was something that the agent has already used, like the postcard, the e-postcard that marketing sends, you can come in here to personal content. You'd find it there. But we're going to create one from scratch here. I like the blue because I'm a Colwell banker man to the core. Uh, all right. <laughs> so nothing. So here's the template of the flyer. Okay, cool. So, but there's nothing in it except my cool information, my um, stodgy Colwell Banker Blue uh, profile shop, all that good stuff. Okay, so how do we get information in here? MLS number. Right here, MLS number or address. I think it was 4548 Bellyache or something. Yeah, do, can I request that you do the other Bellyache one, the 50 something something? Only if you know, uh, there it is, 5458. Okay. All right. So I'm going to click OK, and it's going to take a minute, but just keep in mind that this is what a marketing person would do, and it would take them a half hour to put this together. IQO is going into the Vail MLS right now, and it's grabbing the stuff and saying, okay, we're going to put it together. And then we can edit it as much as we want once the thing populates. So you got to give it a minute. If this makes you antsy because you have to wait 90 seconds, then Shoot, seriously, this is what I did for two and a half years at Sotheby's and it takes a half hour to make a flyer. So let's just uh, let the thing happen. Very good, okay. All right, now, um, I'm not gonna get too deep into this because I think the main thing is just knowing how to, how to go about and, and do the flyer itself, but uh, we can name this um, Bellyache October. This is just for my purposes, October flyer. No one's going to see this, but it helps me realize what I did when I look back into it. Subject, this is what has to change. This is what has to change. If you don't change this 
every 697 available MLS people are going to get something that says on the market dark blue. What? So you got to say something like, like best views in the Vail Valley. Let's just say that. And as I've always said, use a subject that's going to encourage someone to open it. So B exaggerates. They're like, what are you talking about best views? I got to see what they're talking about. Cool. You have gotten them to open it. Add away. Okay. Um, we can change these pictures out. I don't want three exteriors. Okay. So I can click here and it'll take me to my uploaded images. That's not what I want. I want the property photos right here. Okay, and this will give me all the photos that are in the MLS. I want this big photo right here. I'm going to drag it. It's not going to fit super well, so I'm going to move the screen around to get it to fit the way I want. I don't want that plant in there, so I'm going to crop that out a little bit and go here. And if I had a different photo that I just took yesterday of the aspens in bloom, I can add a file and upload it, and then I can use that one. Not in bloom, but going yellow and everything is what I meant to say. Okay, I click Save. And in a second, it'll populate that photo in place of the other exterior. Um, I can maybe edit this one a little bit. I don't like the way the frame sits. So as you see, I can, oh, it's just kind of a funky photo, but I can get rid of some of this green, okay? And save. That's not me calling, by the way. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. And just so we don't overdo our time here, I'm going to leave this one here, but I could edit this one. But I don't like the heading on the market now. That's boring. Every screen that lights up like this, that's an editable screen. Okay, so I already used best views in the valley for my subject. And I want to say here, luxury views and privacy but I can't type it all because it has a limited number of letters. So I'm going to luxury views privacy. I'm just not even gonna use an and because it's a, it's a title and I don't have to be grammatically correct. All right, so there's that. The price, if I wanted to say something else here instead of the price, I can. I can say, call me. Okay, I don't know why I would do that, but um, there's the address. If I don't want anything here, because they've already seen all this, I can just, I can just click delete and maybe say something like, um, now is the time to capitalize, capitalize on this awesome listing, whatever, okay? And I click okay, so I can, I can change this up as much as I want. I can get rid of all these, so on and so forth, okay. I do have some insight that I've run into and IQ chat has helped me. I've built a couple of these to print, and when I go to print, all of a sudden I have a two-page flyer. And the reason being, scroll down if you would on your page, Derek, um, that the disclaimer lines area is too much. So I've just taken that out a, a few times. I've had to. Yeah, that's fine. I, um, I see what you're saying. This is really big stuff here, so blah, blah, blah. You probably have to leave some of it in there. I wonder... I wonder what part, but yeah, we don't want this going into two pages, that's for sure. Um, okay, you notice I clicked inactive so that I don't accidentally send this out to the uh, MLS on my behalf. Um, so nothing's gonna happen, it's inactive, but I'm gonna click finish. Uh, sorry, no, I'm not, because what I have to do now, this is a campaign, this is not an email, and the upshot is that you get stats from this. So that's cool, if you just do this as an email, it's just like an email and it just goes out and you never know how many people opened it or whatever. So that's why we use this as a campaign. But you can't just click send and have it go. You have to schedule it. So we do it on the date. Let's say it's today, so Friday the 13th. Woohoo! Um, anytime after, I look at the clock right now, it's 9.14. So I'm gonna say the next half hour is when I want this to go out, 9.30. I'm not gonna worry about these two things. I don't click okay again here, even though it looks like I should, but that was for, choosing the address, okay? So then I say finish, okay? And it's been added to the campaign, it's done. And at 9.30, this will go out, but it's inactive. If I wanted to change it to active, I would just come over here and go activate event. If I wanted to send a preview to myself, that's awesome. And you just click send preview. 
it's better than preview because preview sort of gives you a, a sort of look, but send preview, it actually comes to your email if you've chosen your email. Um, and so I'm gonna send it to you, Elizabeth. I think you might be in here, maybe. Elizabeth, no, that's fantastic. Never mind. But you can send it to yourself to see how it looks or send it to the agent, see how it looks before it actually goes out, okay? Um, Does it so, go out a PDF? It goes out as an email. No, it, it's, it's an image in an email, essentially. Good, because I've also learned if it's an attachment with these email blasts. No, no, there's no attachment. It goes out. And the other thing that's nice is that um, the flyer is a, it's live, too. It links directly to the property if you click on it. And you don't even have to say that, but people know when their finger pops up when they're scrolling over something, oh, it's live. So if they click on it, it's going to take them to the property details page in ITO, which is awesome. Oh, wow. Okay. Or it takes them to the website. I can't remember, but it links directly to whatever property you've chosen. And you can choose any property you want. Like if Chris wants to market some, some schlep from Slifer or Slifer or whatever company that is, if there's a listing there, I think he can grab that. Maybe it's just in-house. I can't remember. But you can, you can send... You wouldn't do this to the MLS, but you can send a new listing that's not yours to a buyer and say, here's your, here's your place, Bob. I got it. It's right here. Take a look, right? So it's got a lot of functionality. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this so that there's so that I don't mess up like I did uh, two weeks ago. Um, but are there any questions before I do this? No, I don't think so. Um, Betsy has a new list listing that um, we just put in yesterday it's in Leadville well I because I'm not seeing that is it because it's in Leadville like on the yeah, dash it's too high up the elevation's too high and the listing can't uh, <laughs> can't transfer to anywhere. Um, I don't know let's let's take a look you're not seeing it in IQO is that what you're saying well it's, I know all this stuff is there because I did it but when in this new and reduced properties spot um, I didn't see it yesterday and maybe it was because I was expecting it to um, happen immediately and it wasn't. And I only had like three pages for bail. But since it's in Leadville is why I was, it, I was wondering if that's why it wasn't being visible. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like uh, there aren't a whole lot of new things here. So um, is, it, is it listed in the Vail MLS or the Leadville MLS, Betsy? No, it's in, it's in the veil. Hmm. Okay, well, um, you can send me the address and I can dig into it in the afternoon after fan club, but I'm not sure. I don't know about the ins and outs. I mean, all I would say, Elizabeth, is it seems like in Bozeman, this goes for you all too. It seems like your two markets, your two boards of realtors are super fascist is all I can think. And so anytime something's weird about the veil MLS, I said, yeah, because you guys are the MLS is weird there. In Bozeman, I know you guys have some issues that the other markets don't have in terms of access and things like that. So sometimes there's not a lot we can do about it. I don't know. I've never seen a, a lead bill listing in the Vail MLS, but it um, doesn't mean it can't happen. It'll okay. say out of area. It'll say add area? Out of area. Oh, yeah. Okay. But it should show up here. So why don't you send me the address uh, and the MLS number if you, if you would, and I'll try to get into it this afternoon, Betsy. Um, but the best, the best solution to this is just go find a buyer, put the thing under contract, and who cares where it shows up, right? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, so let's move into the regularly scheduled program. I hope that was helpful and not too fast, but um, you'll be able to watch this. And I don't know if you've watched any of the posts. I post the, these on YouTube at, at uh, one-third the speed, so they really slow down. Ashley, no, nothing funny on that. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, here's what we're going to do. We are going to pretend that you have exported your um, contacts from, let's see. Uh, hi, Jeremy, how you doing? Um, from, well, let's, okay, Krista, you're, you're new to real estate. You're new to the office. You have, you have people, right? You have what we call this, your sphere of influence, correct? Yes. Are there 500? Are there 28? 
give me a ballpark number of how many people you feel like you could you could call today to say, hey, it's Chris, and I just want to give you the great news that I've that I've joined Coal Bankers Think Properties in Bozeman, and I'm a real estate agent, and I want to be the person that you turn to. How many people do you have that you could do that to today? Um, maybe a hundred. Awesome. So, where do they live? And I'm not asking on Fifth All Street or whatever. The where do these things live? All over the U.S. Okay. And do you have a spreadsheet where they live that that you have some like okay here's this person's name their email phone number and maybe an address or whatever i have several you have several okay this is where it gets complicated and then at the outset and, and jeremy you didn't hear my preamble here but at the outset i said this is one of the more difficult things you have to do as a real estate agent whether it's iql or any other crm that you use crm stands for i think um can't remember much no it stands for uh, contact customer resource management is that right i think it's better crm can't remember much because i can never remember much but um anyway you need to figure out how to uh get those people in your sphere of influence family members friends past clients business people that you want to you want to assert yourself as the real estate agent for them to go to when they are ready to do some business. Or if someone says, oh yeah, I was thinking of selling my house, who should I talk to? Oh, you should talk to Krista. Uh, she's new in Bozeman, she's super, she's, she's great. Okay, so how do you get these people into your IQO? That's the good question. My advice from day one in terms of a spreadsheet of your contacts is to have a master contact spreadsheet. Everyone you can think of, from your pastors to your baseball coaches to your kids' teachers, anyone that you know you could call and say, hey, it's me, and they would go, oh, yeah, they wouldn't hang up on you. They should all be on a spreadsheet with as much information as you can get. And I, I really recommend, and someone can say that doesn't work at all, but I really recommend having one master spreadsheet with everybody on it. And why do I recommend that? I think it comes from my school days where at a private school, you just have a master sheet with everybody. Because regardless of what different programs they're in, if you can't account for everybody on a daily basis, you don't know if, they're, if they got caught in a tree or if they hitchhiked to, to LA for the night to see a concert because you don't have that master sheet. So I think of it the same way that you really need to figure out a way to get all the people that you are associated with, that you could consider your sphere of influence into a single master spreadsheet. And I think I'm still sharing my screen and what you're seeing here is a sample of, God dang it of um, I'm getting these uh, leads from Grand Junction. I'm not even an agent, it's bizarre. Maybe I should be one in Grand Junction only. Anyway, this is an example of what uh, that spreadsheet would look like. Let me get rid of this noise in the background here. Um, okay, so whether you're an Excel fan or not, you should be because anytime you export your contacts from Outlook or from your another CRM or from Top Producer or Buffini or whatever program you've used, they end up in a spreadsheet, okay? And so here is what I think the best setup for your spreadsheet is, and I can email this to everybody after we're done here, but you know, last name, first name, um, putting things in their own columns is really useful for a spreadsheet because you have a lot more flexibility and manipulation. You can manipulate them a lot better. But here's the key one after the phone and email is the contact type. The more work you can do with your spreadsheet at the front end about contact type, the easier it is going to be for you to set things up in IQO um, in terms of who's getting what, okay? So contact type, uh, maybe family, and then maybe you have one that's a, a buyer. Let's take MLS out. This person was a, was, was a buyer. And so what you're doing in your IQO is you would have a bunch of different contact types. And so if you just wanted to send an email to, to buyers, all you'd have to do is select buyer when you're an IQO and anyone that has been a buyer will populate and you can send your email to those people. Um, ideally, everyone will be on your newsletter campaign. So pretty much all of these should say newsletter. Okay. So um, this, again, there's no like you can't just go like this and have the thing happen. This takes a lot of work, okay? The, the more people you have in your SOI, A, the better, but B, the more work it's going to take, all right? That's just the facts of it. I'm very, very sorry. I feel badly about Does the that. agents have to take the time to build their contact list, correct? Yeah, and, 
and agents are going to be like, well, no, I don't want it. Okay. Well, that, if that's, that's your bread and butter butter. And if, and if you don't feel like you can put the five or six hours into doing that, then I don't know, then you're going to be chasing a lot of rabbits down a lot of holes for a long time. So it's a, it's a big task on the front end, but if they get it done and then just every time they have a new contact, they go to their master spreadsheet, add it to that. Uh, and then it keeps it all that way. And no one's going to leave this company. I, I know that, but that way, when you do, need to go somewhere or whatever you have your spreadsheet you don't have to go futz with eight different programs and export and massage and all that kind of stuff so it serves a number of purposes i think for me i'm a spreadsheet fan and i just think this is how i would do it and while i know i don't have real estate experience um i've been to estates and um and uh, i try to keep it real so maybe that you know. <laughs> okay, so how do we do this then? How do we even get our contacts from this spreadsheet into IQO? First thing you need to know is that when you have your spreadsheet, you have to save it as a CSV, which stands for comma separated value. So most of them are not going to be exported as such. So when you get your master list done, then you have to go back in and save as. And you've got all these different options when you click on this, down, this uh, drop down all these different ways to save a spreadsheet. Nonsense, I know. But the one you want is right here, CSV comma delimited, a CSV file. That's what IQO, uh, that's what works for IQO. So I save it as that. I have a, a folder on my desk called, top, called spreadsheets. So I'm just going to sample master spreadsheet CSV. I'm gonna save, it already exists. Yes, I wanna save it anyway. Okay. now. This is a very sad thing. I only have four contacts, but I'm going to start building my business today by leveraging these four contacts and letting them know that any referrals they make for me, I will um, be a wonderful friend forever and ever. Okay. Where do I go to get these contacts into my IQO so I can start sending emails, get them on my newsletter list, holiday campaigns, et cetera, et cetera. Um, your file cabinet where all your people live is this third one here, their customer relations, right? So you can go in and you can see your contacts that already exist. You can see the leads that you may have gotten through the company, keeping in mind that a lead is something that came to you from out there, finding you on the internet. Contacts are the people that you have put in on purpose because they're your, they're your SOI, your sphere of influence. Ideally, your lead, you'll convert and they'll become a contact. But I know there's a lot of definition issues here, but leads are people that were sent to you Contacts are people that you have brought. Some people think, hey, man, my contact is hot. They're really on fire. They want to buy right now, so I'm going to make them a lead. Then you're going to get confused in terms of IQO, so just think of them as hot contacts, I suppose. But um, if you call something a lead, what it means to our company is that it came to you through Facebook, through the CB Distinctive website, through home valuation. It came to you because people are out there clicking on things all the time. You've never met them. Okay? All right. Um, Here's where I'm going to go to get these contacts into my IQO. Okay, I'm going to pretty pretty much just you see it's, it says import contacts. I'm going to click there. IQO gives you this big screen that doesn't mean anything. It just says, "Hey, welcome. Look at all this white space. Isn't this attractive?" No. Okay, so I'm going to go to next. Okay, and here's where I can choose the file that I want to import. Okay. This thing here, first row contains field names. If you look at my spreadsheet, this is the first row. Rows go across, columns go vertical. It contains field names. This is a field name, last name, phone, right? So I keep that as yes. It contains field names. It's a comma separated value and I'm gonna import into contacts. And I've never seen anyone use this. Um, so don't even, I wouldn't even worry about that. The less you know, the better sometimes. So I'm gonna choose this file. Okay, so it's just like any other import function. It, I click it and it says, where do you want to go, buddy? I go to my CB folder, I go to spreadsheets, and you know I can make sure I know which one it is, date modified, that's today, so I know that's the one. I click it, I click open, and I go to next. Okay, and then I have the opportunity to match those fields with the thing in IQO. Okay, so I don't want to ignore any of these. So this is last name. This is first name. 
This is phone. This is email. Address city. Don't ask me why some of these populated and others didn't. Let's just state. Okay. And postal code. And this is a big one, contact type. Okay, because that's again how um, IQO is going to know what to do with these people once they're in there. Okay, if you don't have any contact types, it's fine. It's just going to be more work once they're in IQO to get them assigned to contact types. You can do it individually. And when you're adding new contacts, that's probably how you're going to do it. But for the big initial import, if you can have those contact types filled out in one column, you are going to be a much happier um, camper. Okay. Now, I don't really want to do this because I don't want, these are four made up people. I don't know, sammy at gmail.com. I'm not going to import it, but this is what you do. And then you're going to come down here and click next. And based on how big your list is, it's going to be done like that, or it's going to be done like that. Okay. You have 200. Krista, if you have your list of 100, it's probably going to take 30 seconds to get them in there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to cancel, but I'm going to pretend that I did this and I'm going to come into my contacts and just see what all this action looks like. Now, because I'm a loser and a company man to the core, the only contacts in my IQO are a bunch of MLS people in six different markets. Um, so, hello, IQ slow. That's what I call it sometimes, IQ slow, because it is just a mammothly slow program. Okay, look at this. Aren't I popular? 4,302 contacts. Again, no, I'm not popular. None of these people like me. They're all agents who are sick of hearing from me. Uh, except for the Sun Valley people who love my Bozeman newsletter. And that's all thanks to you, Ash. That's all thanks to you. Um, okay, so uh, these are all the people in my contacts. You can look at your leads and contacts together. You can look at your leads. I'm not an agent, so I don't have any. But any leads you get from the company websites and such or your Facebook or whatever will show up here. Um, and then contacts here. And I'm gonna let me ask right now, can you all see the, the, the vertical screen of faces that I'm seeing? No. Yes? Yes. Okay. All right. And so when I minimize this, yeah. so I can see my whole thing. All right. So you can, you can sort these any way you want. You can sort, if you click on last name here, it'll sort alphabetically by last name. If you click on add it, it'll sort them. Okay. Activity. These buttons show how many times someone's done something. So Nick, Selling Montana, I would never use that. Don't, I don't want you to sell Montana, man. Um, he's looked at two emails. Uh, Peter Young uh, has looked at three. Other people have said no. So that's what those are. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Like it tells you what they did. Emails opened. They didn't visit any websites or anything like that. That's Let's say you just met someone. You've imported your master contact list. Way to go. Now you've met someone on the trail. You got their contact info and you want to put them on your newsletter campaign. You come here to new contact and you enter whatever information you can about them. And if you want to assign them a contact type, you can click one here. Do you need to make a new contact type? You can manage and you can create a new contact type. Okay, awesome. This, this bar scrolls, so there's all these here. Um, this one, hot fall 2017. I don't want anyone thinking I'm like um, keeping track of models or anything like that. My advice, Remember I said leads are leads and contacts are contacts, but what if you have a contact that is in town and raring to go and you wanna have them in a list? You can create your own contact type like hot fall 2017 and add them to this. They can be in a lot of different contact types. It doesn't mean, oh, he can't be in the other one. And that way you can just go to your hot fall list and you can see the people that are hot to trot right now on a daily basis, okay? All right, so. I enter all that stuff. Um, Property Watch, I have a training video on that if you need to know how to do that. It's a little bit cumbersome, but it's an awesome way to make people know that you are the bomb diddly do in your market. Always click save when you do this stuff. It's on the bottom right, super counterintuitive. They're fixing that. Um, so anyway, that's how you enter a new contact. IQO and Ashley and Elizabeth, this is super important. Try never to use the back arrow. Okay, that just messes with IQO. Always look for the close right here. Okay, because that way you stay in the in the in the drawer in the file cabinet that you're in. If you click back, you probably lose the drawer altogether and have to sort of start over. Um, you can search by name. You have to get rid of this dumb little asterisk. 
It's just the dumbest so why thing. Is, why, is, why is it there? Because it asterisks means required field. So you have to have that in there, but it just, it messes people up because they don't take it out. And then it's like, Hey, we don't know anyone whose name starts with asterisk. Well, yeah, don't put the ass and asterisk. You know what I mean? I too. All right. So, um, you can, you can change how many you can see at once. Uh, right now we've got 24. Just know that if you go up to 800, you, your functionality is going to be real slow. Okay. So, but you're like, where's, where's so-and-so we'll go to the next page, whatever. Okay. Um, if you want to add Larry Witt to a campaign, you want him on your newsletter campaign. So you've, you clicked him. And then you can come here and you can find the campaigns and you can find your Bozeman newsletter campaign where to go and just right here thing and then and click save and all of a sudden Larry Witt is receiving Bozeman newsletters. Yeah, it's that simple. Actions or hover buttons. This you can add them to a campaign this way. You can edit this guy right here. You can add a note. <laughs> you can add a follow-up action. Let's say Larry called yesterday and he said, hey, I'm going to be out of town for a week, but in, on next Tuesday, I want you to call me. Click follow-up action, follow-up request, call Larry. Ooh, it said call husband. That's weird. I'm not married to a man. Um, I, whatever. It's no big deal. Um, call on Tuesday. Due date. I'm going to make this date um, next Tuesday. And I want note, same day notification, and then I would push save. And that way, IQO is going to email me to call Larry. It's like having a little um, secretary. Okay? All right, so I'm sort of um, trying to go over as much as I can here. Hmm. You can change the way you see things. You can say, I just want to see my hot contacts right here. God, that sounds awful. Uh, you can create a new view, but don't get too too geeky with that because I've got one agent who's pulling her hair out right now because she can't figure out how to undo one of those things. So you can get yourself in some trouble sometimes. Too loud. Am I breaking up for everybody or just no? No, finally for once you're fine. Hmm. Margaret, breaking up is hard to do, and I'm really sorry. Grand Junction's having trouble with me. It's not a surprise. Um, hmm. Okay, so that's how you um, put people in and, and manage and manipulate them. Let's say that I don't want Ned in my uh, in here anymore. I can go here and I can I click him and then I can come to the bottom and I can delete him. But once you delete, they're gone. If you want to delete them from a contact type, you have to go into that contact type. I want to see all my, um, let's see, all my Sun Valley MLS. So I click there, and now it's going to go from 4,302 to probably about 400, 401. The only way I can get rid of him from this contact type is, uh, shoot, I forget. I click here so I can go see him, and I unclick here. Okay, that's the only way I can get rid of them. If I click delete, it's going to delete the contact. And I know that's cumbersome, but you have to come into the contact type and undo it here. Okay. All right. I want to show you one other thing. Now that I'm in the, the contacts, look at all these drawers in this dude's uh, file cabinet. Here's the details page. This is really cool. If I've worked with this guy before and I know he's got specific vendors that he wants to use, I can put them in here. And that way I'm like the super authority. Uh, hey, hey, Ned, are we still working with Charles at Wells Fargo? Because I put it here. Oh, great. And I know that you did a warranty. Are we going to do that again when you sell this house? Fantastic. And they're like, damn, this guy remembers a lot. Attachments, you have things like that. Actions, if you have new actions that you want to make about this person, you can do that. If you want to set them on a, on a property watch, um, you do that on the prior screen, but then you manage it in here. And here's the history of when you entered and anything you did to this person. So you can go back and see what you did uh, for this contact. Okay. All right. Um, I said, I didn't want to go the full hour today and I, I'm going to hold to that. So it's nine 40. Um, I, I kind of have um, cheated a little bit because really the toughest thing about all of this is you getting your contacts onto a spreadsheet. And there's not a whole lot I can do for you with regards to that, except 
if you wanted to send them to me once they're on a spreadsheet, um, I can probably do some massaging and try to get them in a single spreadsheet without a bunch of duplicates. But the more you're able to do that, I, I think the better. Um, Jeremy, you've, you've been with the company for about two or three months now, I think, maybe more. Um, if we were to look at your contact list, which do you have contacts in IQO yet? Um, I've been with the company for maybe a month and like maybe like five weeks now. No. Oh. Um, and no, I, I haven't uploaded it into the CRM yet. Okay. Do you, I'm sorry to have um, pretended that you've been with the company uh, longer. It's not because you're boring me or anything. It's like, oh, he's been here for years. Um, right. Do you have, do you have a spreadsheet yet? Are you creating that? What, what are you doing? Um, I should probably create one on Excel rather than, um, maybe pull them off my old one, put them onto an Excel sheet and figure it all out. But I'll probably just have to redo putting them in Excel the way that yeah. you formatted it. Yep. And that, like I say, like that's in order to sail on the ocean, you need to build the boat. And what you're doing when you do this is you're building the boat and it's a lot of work. Uh, but in order to get people to receive your newsletter and to send emails to them saying, Hey, look at this great new listing. You got to build that boat. So, um, Take the time to do that. If you if you want to export your contacts from whatever you were using, maybe it's your Outlook or your Gmail, uh, you, ex you export them into an Excel. You can send it to me and I can take a look and say, yeah, you're pretty close and here's what I would do now. And then maybe in a couple hours, you'll be able to get those things into IQO. But the sooner the better, I think, because you really, you can't leverage our tools slash yourself unless you've got contacts in here. Okay, um, Betsy, where are we? I have a lot of my contacts already updated, and um, I, I'm I'm slowly but surely getting them in into IQ. Okay, can I take a look? He's looking at you right now. <laughs> and just keep in mind, don't ever make me mad because I'll come in here and I'll put in some of the goofiest contacts ever. <laughs> Donald Trump will be getting emails from you if you make me mad. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. He is, after all, a real estate mogul. All right, so you have 74 people in here. That's fantastic. Um, have you sent any emails to any of these people? Have you done anything with them? No. No? No. No. So you, I need you to do that. The newsletter. These, you but these are all current, correct emails, phone numbers, everything I have is all updated. Well, so pat on the back to you, but what you've done is you've built your boat but it's just sort of sitting on those uh, on the cables right above the water. And the water's like, man, yes. and the boat's like, no, I just want to go play, but you're not, you know, you're not lowering it. So you're that's right. nice. Um, so Jeremy, Betsy's got you beat a little bit. She's been with the company a couple more months, so I'm not going to be too upset with you, but, <laughs> but um, this is what you got to do. And um, uh, let's see, I would ask all of you to put me in your contacts, even though um, I'm not an, part of your SOI, but that way, anytime you need to test something or preview it, you can send preview to just search Derek and it'll come to me and I'll say, hey, I'll say, what are you bothering me for? And then I'll say, um, good job or fix this. So if you have me in there or your OM. <laughs> um, I can't that, believe you said you before us. <laughs> yeah, well, I had some bad dreams and today's Friday the 13th. I'm trying to build my karma back up. Um, so, but just to have someone's eyes able to look at things is always super, super helpful because otherwise you might send a Bozeman newsletter to freaking Sun Valley MLS. Oh my God. I just keep, I can't let go oh, of that. Ashley, I'm glad I'm not you. <laughs> you picks on me enough. <laughs> so no, that was my fault though. I totally loaded it and then didn't undo it. Um, okay. Um, hopefully that's a, a good start. And uh, we have one more of these on Monday, which is about CD exchange. Um, and so uh, that's about the least interesting thing we're going to talk about, but it's still important because it's corporate and you need to be available on the world wide web with Coldwell Banker, not just CB Distinctive. So are there any questions that would help everybody here? No? Okay. Um, I appreciate uh, having you all here and this helps me figure out how to better explain things. So uh, even if you got nothing out of it, I did. So I'm going to stop share and I'm going to stop the recording and we will see some of you on Friday or uh, Monday. I think it was at 1030 or some dorky time because I have a nine o'clock meeting. Bank club today at 11.
talking about nonverbal communication and body language. And the only email I got from people with suggestions is um, don't be naked. So <laughs> that's where we're going to start. We'll start from the ground up. Yeah. We be on like, the Why did I join this company? Oh my God. Yeah. So, all right. <laughs> Thanks everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.